Hi everyone, welcome back to G'day Namaste. Uh, video might look a little bit different today because it is my very first collaborative YouTube video and I'm very excited for it. So today I'm going to be speaking with um, Henna Vidge. She is the co-founder of Expat Orbit, which is an expat consultancy group. So we're going to be talking about all the services they offer, um, how they can help and support expats, um, either currently in India or planning on moving or relocating to India. Not necessarily like expats who are, you know, like myself, married to an Indian or in a relationship with an Indian, but any kind of expat. So any foreign person who has relocated to India, they can help with everything. So it's um, a really, really exciting um, collaboration to have and I'm really looking forward to the chat with her today. So let's get started. <laughs> So um, thank you so much for joining me today, Hannah. Um, I guess we'll just get started as to, um, you know, you can give a bit of an introduction about yourself and Expat Orbit, how it came to be, and then, yeah, we can go from there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda, for having me on the on this particular channel of yours. It's, a, it's, it's an awesome channel. And um, all the expats who are there, I'm sure they're enjoying it very much. And those who are not, I must say that they should certainly subscribe to it get lots of good information and updates about what it is to live in India. <laughs> and that is precisely what Expat Orbit is also about, <laughs> you know, just helping you live in India. We totally understand how difficult it is. So, uh, yes, so um, uh, thank you for having me. I am uh, the co-founder of Expat Orbit, one of the co-founders of Expat Orbit. And how Expat Orbit came to be is like, you know, it's a startup in the global mobility industry. Um, so basically what we do is that we help companies and expats ease out the entire movement process from one country to another you know the entire international assignment process so be to the companies or the expats so you know traditionally what happens is that companies in this particular industry uh, they focus on uh, you know majorly compliances like taxation or social security etc but then uh, you know in our experience uh, especially you know my co-founder pratik uh, he was working with kpmg's expatriate services for a long long time and I was also an expat myself in London. So based on our experiences, we realized that uh, compliances is just one of the challenges. You know, there are a lot of other things that expats uh, are harrowed with. Um, and I completely understand that, you know, all those challenges like settling in the country, the language challenges, the cultural issues, um, the accent challenges in general, right? Uh, the accents are different. Um, people are different, you know, basically in a different country altogether. And even, you know, the regulatory aspects also. Uh, for expats also, it's very difficult to understand all these things. So. That is where the idea of Expat Orbit came in. So we thought, you know, we'll create a platform, uh, a company wherein we, you know, because since we are experts in global mobility, we have a lot of expertise in these area because of our experiences, uh, past corporate experiences. We thought we'll create this uh, particular thing wherein, you know, we can assist companies and expats in all aspects, just a holistic platform. So that's what we do. That's what Expat Orbit is all about. Great. And so, um, what are some of the, um, I guess, services and ways that you can help um, experts and companies too, but I kind of want to prefer to stick to just like individual people because that's sort of what I'm, you know, aiming towards. But yeah, um, what are some of the services and ways that you can help? Right, right, right. So see, uh, the services that we provide are actually across the entire length of the expat life. So, you know, um, let's say, for example, you know, you're a professional employee, professional expat who's moving from, uh, I don't know, which may maybe Australia to India, right? So it all starts with uh, the, you know, actually even starting to determine what should be the appropriate visa type for you to enter into the country. So even if you're a professional expat, right, it starts with employment visa, maybe let's say, uh, for people like you, like who are getting married, who married to Indians, right, in India. So what sort, what should be the important uh, um, aspects that you need to consider while applying for your visa? Or even, you know, uh, understanding what all uh, employment considerations or the vocational opportunities you're looking at. So it starts right from the very thought that germinates in your mind that, okay, I want to move to India. So it starts from there. So visa, then, you know, once you are there in India, so we start with the pre-arrival counseling, um, immigration, FRRO registration, helping you find a house in India, um, you know, yeah. helping you with the bank account opening, Aadhaar, PAN, 
all those all small all sorts of things helping your kids with the school search uh, language yeah. training cultural acclimatization so you know cultural trainings are there uh, just about anything and everything that goes into your expat life so basically it's more like uh, you know uh, you can have us on your speed dial number one yeah. <laughs> anything any challenge you right. face in india uh, we are there to help so not just the expats but the companies also but expats uh, mm -hmm. uh, is one area which we feel was the most ignored uh, by the traditional companies uh, the individual expats yeah. so that is one thing so sure. yeah that's great you know and i do wish that like um this was something that i was aware of when i came here or when i was you know before i came and when i got here because there's been so many challenges that i've experienced where you know i've, I've really had to learn as i go and i think that's the same experience with a lot of people whether they're right. a professional expat or whether they're like me married or you know in a relationship with an Indian um is that it's very much learn as you go so you have an experience yes. you kind of process it you learn and then you go on to the next one um yeah, yeah so I think that's really really great that you have these kinds of um, you know options available especially I didn't realize like um you know a, which visa would you apply for if you are planning on getting married and the yes. foreigners yeah. office registration. Those are some really, really tough um, processes to go through alone if you, right. don't, if you don't know who to go to, if you don't know what you're doing. And unfortunately, right. one of the things that I have noticed is that there's not a lot of consistency around the country. Like it's like I, the experiences I have at my local foreigners office is completely different to say a friend of mine Absolutely. in Mumbai or someone yes. in Hyderabad. And, yes. you know, it's, it's hard, like, you know, you can ask those people, like, oh, what happened with this? Or, you know, um, what did they say about this? But it's not consistent. Yeah. So sometimes Absolutely. having, you know, yeah. a local behind you um, advocating and doing those things for you is a really, really great option. And I'm really glad that you do that. You, you know, what you said is absolutely true. And this is something that we've been hearing a lot. Um, so we did a lot of uh, research across, you know, Facebook groups, Quora, and we saw the questions that people have posted and the answers that the replies that they get. Most of the times, this is exactly what we see, right? Someone says that, okay, I am going to visit FRRO in uh, uh, so-and-so city, let's say, you know, maybe um, Chandigarh, right? And people say that, oh, yeah, I went this one time, the officer was very rude, or they asked me to submit these these documents. I don't know if you should probably also be submitting these down. But that is exactly the thing, right? So, uh, and that is that is exactly why we, we, we've tried to pull in the experiences of expats and the expertise yeah. of experts so that, you know, you get the comfort, yeah. authenticity, as well as the credibility at one place. We really don't want you to, you know, just... Uh, I, I completely answer you know, because when I was an expat in London, right, uh, even though I was getting all this assistance from uh, my company, but there were still certain things, right? For example, uh, I, I lost my passport actually when I was in London. And I must tell you, there was a time when it was. Uh, it was uh, it was scary it was scary like hell yeah when i lost my passport and and it was just simply searching on the internet okay what do i do where do i go to report a complaint can i work in uh, london now that i've lost my passport i don't have the work permit lots of questions and i must tell you that yeah. those were probably the <laughs> most difficult hours uh, i can imagine I you know during that entire stay so yeah, yeah i mean it's it's always better to have you know a, a place wherein you can you can get very reliable, credible answers and support. So, I mean, uh, yeah. that's that's what we try to provide. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And um, so <clears throat> how can people contact you? How can expats contact you for assistance? Like I know on Instagram you're very active, so that's fantastic. Um, you know, on the website is there like a inquiry form, Facebook, that sort of thing. What channels can people use to contact you? So uh, people can get in touch with us on uh, on the on our website as well. It's expatorbit.com. So we have our contact mm -hmm. form over there as well. Then we're pretty active on LinkedIn and Instagram. So anyone can DM, DM us and we are uh, quick to respond to them. And uh, yeah. then even otherwise, uh, you know, on the on our website, actually, uh, my email ID is also there. My co-founder's email ID is also there. So people can reach yeah. out to us directly as well. Um, uh, 
I love to talk to expats. I think the entire team loves to talk to expats. That's how yeah. we got in touch with you, actually. Yes, so exactly. We, yeah. <laughs> so I I just welcome any opportunity that is there. You know, not just for any queries, but even sometimes uh, you know if people just want to share their experiences, maybe propose yeah. some ideas about you know what all challenges they are facing. I still mm -hmm. yeah, the conversation that we had is still fresh in my mind. uh and yeah. you know all the aspects you suggested they're still fresh in my mind and i'm really looking forward to incorporating those in the products as well yeah, yeah. good yeah <laughs> um yeah so that was like a really really great conversation that we had i don't yeah. remember when it was last year sometime um it feels like so long ago now but yeah it was now um, yes yeah yeah so that was a yeah really great really great conversation we had about you know the Yeah. Um, I guess the future of expat over what you're planning on doing the application you're planning on launching which I think yeah. is great. So how about you yes, tell me a bit yeah. more about the app that you're planning on launching and how it's going to help. So this you is can talk um, about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um I can certainly say something about it. Okay, so this this app is uh, Um, it's, it's something that you know. It's it's very close to my heart personally. So we are working on it. Um, uh, we've been working on it for a long time. You know, the feature set is also all finalized, and everything is done. Usability is set. Everything is done. So the intent is obviously to you know provide a lot of ease and convenience to expats. Um, it is going to be power packed with a lot of features. Some of those that you had suggested earlier. A lot of those actually, uh, as well. Uh, but right now what so what what's actually happening is that you know we're in the final phases of development we basically we were about to launch the app uh, this month itself mm -hmm. but we sort of ran into okay. some issues and uh, we are you know sort of revising the code base a bit and hopefully in a yeah. few more days it should be there uh, but you know what so what i can say right now is that it's an invite only sort of a platform that we are building okay. at the moment uh because you know we really want to ensure the authenticity of the experiences that people get on this application uh and the security so that is like the major yeah. concern yeah <laughs> which is i do something no, no. i do remember specifically saying last time yes. is you know making sure yes. that um you know you do keep it safe and specific to that yes. only <laughs> absolutely so that that's that's very important right because you know uh, yeah. uh, i understand you know for expats it's already very difficult to be sharing their experiences or getting in touch with people and finding the credible people so we really wanted to ensure that you yeah. know everything is crystal clear and airtight in terms of uh, yeah. any spam filters or anything of that sort so uh, hopefully yeah. soon yeah and um, yeah. it it's got a lot of interesting features you know we're uh, pulling in a lot of experts to um help people with all these challenges that you know we spoke about yeah. there be a lot of questions uh, answered yeah. directly um all i can say oh, is great. that uh, you know once we invite people onto that app um, mm -hmm. you know um, we are hopeful that they would not really need to go anywhere else looking at looking for yes. answers anywhere I'll else i'll put yeah. my name down <laughs> i'm obviously absolutely amanda interested. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, we you you're probably you're going to be the first ones to be invited to the app. <laughs> oh, I hope so. <laughs> you, <laughs> we'll Now talk I, more um, about it closer okay. to the launch date. Yeah, for sure. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Now I remember last time that we were speaking, um, you were saying that uh, you know, you were planning on doing different kind of workshops and things like that. Yes. Is that something that you're still thinking about, or have you started doing any of those yet? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yes, we actually uh, we haven't really launched those workshops at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, they are still being, uh, you know, finally edited. So, our video team is actually very, very finicky. Uh, yeah. You worked with them, Amanda, right? So you would know that. <laughs> they, yeah. You know. I mean, they're great, great editing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're very finicky about that, you know. So every single thing has to be absolutely, you know, this way. The editing, the edits, and stuff. So okay. the workshops are actually being uh, uh, being edited, and they'll be launched on the app itself, actually. So there are two workshops are being prepared with expats. So one is a uh, yeah. uh, one's a German expat who's been in India for a long, long time. Um, is that the one very, I spoke to? Uh, I think you spoke to her, Tatiana, right? Yeah. I yeah. guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yes, lovely. yes. Yes, she she's lovely. She's got such a lot of experience in terms of uh, you know. Um, I think she's sort of become a veteran in terms of expat experiences. I believe <laughs> whenever I speak to her, yeah, I end up learning yeah. a lot more about India. So um, there's one workshop yeah. being built with her, and there's another very interesting workshop which is more about how to handle yourself in the professional setup of India, oh, uh, which is okay, really yeah. So 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's actually and, a common question I get, but I don't. I don't have experience in the professional professional world of India. It's not something that yeah. yes, I have any experience or knowledge in. It's just more so what I've heard from other people. So yeah, it's not something mm. that I can give advice on. So I think it's really great that you can offer that kind of work, workshop. Uh, that's that's it. That's exactly so. You know, when we spoke to a couple of people, we did realize that, and especially you know, for um, um, expat professionals in general, of course, it's very difficult. Uh, it becomes a little challenging yeah. because Indians have a different culture, right? I mean, even when I'm talking to you, I'm conscious of the head bob that I'm doing because you know, I am I am used to that, right? But I think I've taken it up. You know, <laughs> you've taken that up, right? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> But a lot of other aspects yeah so i mean I, th that is one workshop that i'm sure it's going to be very interesting which uh, um, it has also given us a lot of insights as indians also as to how to work with expats you know uh, it's being made by yeah. uh, a hungarian expat uh, she worked in india mm -hmm. for a long time she's actually working with the uh, 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 she's actually training diplomats uh, diplomats on how to work with indians so uh, a lot of rich experiences yeah so i'm yeah, sure the, yeah, look really looking yeah. forward to launching all these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And yes, another suggestion that I well, something that we talked about before, and it's obviously obviously something very close to my heart is like the mental health aspect or the mental yes. health side. Yes. So you did say before that you were looking at um, maybe getting a panel or a couple of psychologists um, um, or therapists available that you would put on the app as a recommendation um, because yeah, it is something that I think is overlooked. It's not something I considered at all, my mental health. And, um, you know, sometimes you do need that help to adjust. And so is that right. something that um, is still being considered and kind of brought yes, forward? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, it's absolutely being considered, though not in the first phase, it's being considered for the second phase, especially for the reason because the thing that you suggested, right, we've been talking to a lot of mental health experts. And actually, this entire yeah. thing started off after our discussion. So we were obviously, wow. you know, considering incorporating mental health experts earlier as well. But once we spoke to you, we realized that this is yeah. an area which is extremely important. So we started speaking yeah. to a lot of people. And that is when I realized mm -hmm. that, yes, there is genuinely a gap in the market when it comes to yeah. uh, understanding the expats, the cross-cultural mindset. So yeah. uh, we've been actually talking to a lot of people. Uh, we we were in fact uh, planning to launch a workshop as well on that area, but uh, uh, it was more about you know we were just trying to fine tune a lot of aspects. So we just uh, yeah. uh, set it up for the second uh, phase because that is okay. one area wherein you know you need to have a lot of lot more security in the app so that of you feel yeah. very very comfortable sharing just about anything you want. So that is yeah. one area that. Yeah that's going to be there uh, pretty soon but yes it is in the making yeah. that's what oh, i said you know awesome. your suggestions yes. um we really love yeah. your suggestions that way. yeah Thank it's you. going to be there yeah. very soon <laughs> and so these mental health professionals they're sort of versed yes. and have expertise in both like um i guess expat life um uh, western culture as well as local culture because that's something that i did actually get a few questions about recently um, I yes. am actually also doing a collaboration video soon with a mental health professional here in India. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, I'm going to be talking to her about how to seek treatment and things like that. But some wow. questions I got was um, from some other expats is yeah. finding a therapist or a mental health professional that has knowledge and information about local culture and Western culture. So that's what I wanted to yeah. bring up with you today to see if that is something that, yes, you do, well, you will have available in the future. Yes, yes, absolutely. And really glad to know that you're doing this interview. I'd love to look at it and, uh, you know, maybe even get in touch with people, of, you know, whom you feel have helped you out. Uh, so anyone yeah, you feel, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, anyone you feel yeah. that, you know, has helped you out and you feel is, is a great enough suggestion for the expats also to be to meet with. We'd love to have them on the platform as yeah. well. We'd love so, to talk to yeah, them. Sure. Actually, yeah. I think um, I think I did message on Instagram a while ago. My life coach, okay. Frangeli, she's someone that has helped me a lot. Um, she okay. is a qualified yoga instructor, and I think she's just okay. finishing up her qualification in Ayurvedic um, practice, okay. Ayurvedic medicine. Yeah, and so okay. she's a qualified life coach. Um, she has lived abroad in the UK, but she's an Indian national, so she also has that oh, nice. experience. So you said the application to begin with is going to be invite only. So. How is that going to work? Like, do um, will people subscribe? Like, put a um, like a point of sorry. What am I trying to say? Will people like put an expression of interest through the website, or how do they get an invite to this? 
Right. So, uh, see, the first round of invites that we're going to extend is to the expats whom we are in touch with. And then they would have their own invite code in the app with which they can invite the other expats yeah, to I join think. as well. Right. And okay. uh, we'll, of course, have, yeah, we'll, of course, have an expression of, yes, yes, absolutely. So, you know, you can, you can okay. certainly share it with all the people. The idea is that, you know, uh, you get all the, you get people whom you know and, um, yeah. The others also get people whom they know, and then there's an entire community that you can trust and you can connect with. So yeah, that's why exactly. we want to build it that way. And then there would yeah, be, of course, an expression of interest form available on the website, and we'll keep extending invites all the more. Um, okay. There would be an entire verification process as well yeah. that would be involved, um, so okay. that you know it's 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 just just so that we can yeah. ensure that uh, uh, you know there is no there's no spam happening on the website because uh, on the app. Is it would be an entire community feature involved as well, and we would not want anyone's privacy or security to be disturbed. So that would uh, yeah. just simply take care of that. Um, but yes, yes exactly. uh, that's <laughs> I know it's like right. a major oh, I'm concern. I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited for you. It's such a great opportunity, and I think yeah, I think, I think you're definitely filling like um, a, a big gap in the market in terms of expat support and having all of these yeah. things available. Right, right. Thank you so much. It it always feels great to get this sort of a feedback on this thing. <laughs> I really yeah. hope it's helpful for everyone. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking my notes. Um, and just, I think this is the last question. So, in your experience, um, mm -hmm. what areas of expat life do people tend to struggle with the most? Or like, you know, you people you've talked to, or people that you've had you come into contact with. What are some, um, yeah, what are some of the biggest struggles or um, other than obviously the <laughs> the um, uh, what you know FRO kind of procedures being very different across the right, board. Right, right. Uh, so Amanda, you know, um, I mean, of course, people struggle across. Or, you know, different people have different challenges across the different yeah. aspects of expat life, right? But uh, I would say the buzzword across all the conversations that we have had with expats is. Um, anxiety <laughs> paranoid people are paranoid about you know uh, settling in a different country and it's it's absolutely yeah. understandable right yeah. you're in a you're completely in, you're in a completely different country the people are different yeah. language is different all sorts of things right and i think mm -hmm. this paranoia uh, this anxiety um, how it really originates is what we we've tried to understand is that because there is a lot of information um, mismanagement available um, mis information mismanagement on the internet if you look at it yeah so yeah right so if you uh let's say you're searching for anyone you you want to get in touch with as you said you want to get it in get in touch with a mental health expert or let's say you know if mm -hmm. anyone you know maybe fro visa or tax even right so do am i eligible to work under this particular visa or not uh you know can yeah. i travel to this country or not we've also received questions like okay can i uh, I maybe I cannot move out or oh, I cannot move out of the city. You know, people have panicked and said that, okay, if I've come on a visa, then I cannot move out of my city. If I have to move, I have to get special permission. Uh -huh, yeah. Well, because that is the sort yeah. of information, you know, you search and you get on the internet and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I think that is one of the major concerns that we have felt um, that people are paranoid about it. And, uh, you know, because uh, uh, we feel uh, this, there's a lack of comfort. Uh, uh, they're not able to really trust um, the procedures, um, the authorities and, you know, uh, even the service providers as such. Um, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, there is... A, Understanding expatriate sensibilities is extremely important when it comes to all of these things. So uh, yeah. that is one area which uh, you know which we feel that uh, expats really struggle with. So because you know whenever we receive any query, uh, you know we try our best to answer that query. You know, you know first of all the answer goes like okay, you know you can do it this way or you can do it that way. Yeah. But then there are a volley of questions that come at you, and you realize that you know that volley of questions is essentially because the person is very anxious. They haven't been able yeah. to receive credible support from other places, and you know they've yeah. had to ask multiple people about things. So uh, yeah. that 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 comfort factor is missing, and it's mm -hmm. absolutely understandable. I mean, uh, yeah. that I believe is the underlying thing, and you feel you know you feel like people are not getting you you know what are the concerns you have, and it's yeah. a strange place you are in, right? Definitely, so, yes. Yeah. Oh, I can totally understand, yeah. Especially, like you said, there's a lot of misinformation on the internet or, like, conflicting information. Yeah. One one yeah. website or some advice from Quora might say one thing, one might say something else. And so, yeah, it's really, really hard to try and get that consistent or accurate.
accurate information. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's really, yeah, <laughs> I can make sense. I can understand that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we felt that, you know, that sort of become that sort of becomes like the base thing for a lot of confusion that people have in the country. Even when it comes to yeah. connecting with the other people, you know, you're not really sure which is the right place to go out to or um, is, 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 is it, uh, will it be safe to go and meet people there or, you know, all sorts of yeah. questions. We, yeah, so it's just yeah. understandable. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. All right, I think that's actually all of the questions I had on my list today, but did you have anything else to add or any other questions or anything you wanted to say? Um, well, I think you pretty much covered it all, Amanda. I think um, um, your experience of expat life speaks for itself in the questions that you have asked. So, <laughs> so uh, my, I would only like to say to your audience that, uh, you know, India is a wonderful country. Enjoy every moment that you, every every single um, second that you're spending in it. And uh, we're here to support mm -hmm. you in anything that you need. Don't have to worry about it. We have friends here. <laughs>